It's a really good question. What is up, everybody? Ryan here to talk about the San Francisco Giants today. Got a couple topics to touch on. We got our boy Aubrey Huff over here in trouble on social media. We'll dive into that. We've got our leader and president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi, over on the Tim Kawakami show. Uh, These two are best buds. Anytime Farhan needs to get anything off his chest, he seemingly runs over to Tim Kawakami. And they have a 45-minute discussion or so, so we'll go over all of that. But first, like I said, let's dive into it. Our boy, Aubrey Huff. Hey, great giant world series champion. I don't care what his political views are. I don't care really what he posts on social media, but he got into a little hot water when he slid into the DMS of miss Isabella Maria DeLuca. And let's check this out. Okay. Age appropriate female here, kind of attractive, maybe some physical enhancements going on there. But our boy Aubrey Huff took his shot, and you could see when he took his shot. He took it on, you know, this is very aggressive. Took it on Christmas Day, actually Christmas night, ten thirty-one p.m. Let's 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 grade the pickup line from our boy Aubrey Huff, two-time World Series champion, of course. Hey, beautiful, let's collab over cocktails and bad decisions. Wink emoji. No, no. So very ab- aggressive. Our, our boy Aubrey Huff is stepping in the box and he's, you know, he's swinging first pitch. So he swings first pitch at Isabella Maria DeLuca. And apparently maybe she ignored him or I don't know what happened. But, uh, you know, Aubrey Huff eventually kind of commented on something she said. And then Isabella Maria DeLuca exposed our boy Aubrey Huff's DM saying this you. And apparently after being exposed... You know, a bunch of Dodger fan and a bunch of haters started clowning on our boy Aubrey Huff and he had to delete his social media account. So I, for one, am hoping that in the coming days, he'll make the decision to reinstate those accounts. So I thought you guys definitely wanted to stay up to date on that. But what we need to stay up to date on is our boy, Farhan Zaidi. So did an interview with Tim Kawakami. Like I said, these two are best buds. They seemingly talk about once or twice a year and Farhan gives not only gives you the state of the San Francisco Giants but also gives you some restaurant tips as well. So they got into all things free agency, Yamamoto, Otani, what happened there. Farhan says there are still plenty of guys available in free agency and that maybe ties into the Jeff Passan article that we saw what was it yesterday where it says rival teams believe the Giants are still going to sign one of the big Scott Boris clients, whether that's Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Cody Bellinger, Matt Chapman. Teams believe the Giants are going to sign at least one of those guys. And so Farhan did say, hey, there's plenty of guys left, plenty of time left. He does seem frustrated with how long things are taking in free agency and the players are dragging this out or the agents are dragging this out or the teams themselves are dragging this out. That we've gone deep into this offseason and we still have plenty of available players that are going to make an impact on some major league roster. He even hinted that there should be rule changes. He hinted at this two or three different times that players who are signing multi year contracts, that maybe it's a three to four week period. He's frustrated with the fact that our, that us Giants fans kind of fall in love with the idea of somebody like Otani or Yamamoto or one of these free agencies or Arson Judge coming to play for the San Francisco Giants. And because the process takes so long that you kind of there's kind of a letdown when they inevitably sign back with the Yankees or sign with the Dodgers, and it creates some frustration. So far, I would like to see this process through some kind of rule change tighten up to a three to four week period. Hey, I don't know if that's going to happen, but it does speak to the frustration level of our boy Farhan. He's over here trying to get some things done and it's just not happening. So let's face it, I've been disappointing. Farhan does say there are some things on the board trade wise. He does say that he can't imagine a scenario where he's trading one of our top prospects, Kyle Harrison. He says he doesn't see a scenario where you're moving off Harrison. But if you look at this roster, it's littered with trade candidates. Does somebody want the last year of the contract of Anthony DiScafani? Please take it. You've got somebody like Ross Stripling, who's got one year left at about $12 million. Please take it. Do you package up some of your younger pitchers? Keaton Wynn, Ryan Walker, some of these guys. we got guys in AAA, AA that you could package up. What about former number two overall pick Joey Bart? He's been supplanted by Patrick Bailey. He's certainly somebody that if somebody wanted to take a look, He's a trade candidate as well. If you end up signing somebody like Matt Chapman, 
What does that do for the career of J.D. Davis, who I believe has one year left on his deal? What about Wilmer Flores? I like Wilmer. He's probably one of our best players last year, but it certainly opens up the trade possibilities there. There, He probably is somebody who actually does have positive trade value. Look at Casey Schmidt, another younger player that if you sign somebody like Chapman would be blocked. In the outfield, you basically have a whole bunch of guys that are potential trade candidates. Conforto, they'd like to move off of, I'm sure. Mitch Hanniger and that mistake they'd like to move off of as well. Heliot Ramos, they've seemingly given up on, so he's a young player they may be able to move off of. Austin Slater's got one year, $4 million left on his contract. Mike Yastrzemski's got $7 million on his deal. He's a semi-affordable deal maybe to a team that would look intriguing. The only guy you're really committed to is Jung Ho Lee, who you gave $100 million to. I guess you're partially committed to your 21-year-old outfielder, one of your top prospects, Luis Matos, but you probably got enough of a look at him that if you packaged him up with some pitchers and maybe you landed an elite starter or you landed some uh, another elite position player, you'd be willing to move off him as well. So Farhan says there are some things on the board trade-wise. He expects things to materialize, whether in the free agent market or the trade market in the next couple weeks. They never made a former offer for Juan Soto. He said it's hard to pull off those in interdivision trades. He does have constant communication, apparently, with the Padres GM. He expressed interest that they would be interested in trading for Juan Soto. But I think both teams realize that, you know, trading a bunch of prospects that you, you essentially, you know, either debuted with you or that you got to the cusp of the major leagues and then trading them over to the Padres and watching them pound on you for the next decade isn't even appealing to the San Francisco Giants in a way. So a potential Juan Soto deal, while the Giants were interested, they never made a former offer. They were never really in the running. And then I think the Padres probably liked the Yankees package that they got. So Farhan does mention adding shortstop depth. And he seemingly kind of pulled back on statements that Marco Luciano will be the guaranteed opening day starter for the San Francisco Giants. I think they're going to trade for somebody. He said they'd like to trade for a shortstop that has minor league options so that these two guys could seemingly compete in spring training for the starting job. So if Marco Luciano gets beat out by some guy they trade for, look for Marco Luciano to actually start the year in AAA. I think that's actually a pretty high possibility that we don't even see Marco Luciano to start the year, that he actually begins the year in AAA because they'll probably be able to trade for somebody who's fairly competent, who's probably a little older and maybe a little more experienced and ready to win that job. So look for a new shortstop to come into the fold in the coming weeks. Some of the most concerning comments on the Tim Kawakami show with Farhan Zaidi was when Farhan said that the Giants had two of their worst financial years in the history of the franchise after COVID, of course. And he says there's uncertainty around the payroll coming off those two COVID years. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You know, this is the week. You guys won three World Series before COVID happened. You have one of the premier bar ballparks in all of Major League Baseball, and that and your ballpark's 20, 30 years old. I mean, it's not even a new ballpark, and you still have one of the premier des destinations in all of baseball. I don't want to hear about the ownership whining about money. It seems like you guys have about 100 owners over there at the San Francisco Giants, and maybe we've got too many people with their hand in the cookie jar and extracting money. Hey, if the goal is to break even, that's fine. Well, let's raise the ceiling of what you're making then. Let's make more money. Let's figure out ways to make more money, preferably without charging more at the gate and charging more for soggy garlic fries and $18 beers. This should be a franchise outside of the New York teams and outside of the Los Angeles teams that rake in money from sponsorships. They had that stupid cruise patch on their jersey for a little while. That couldn't have been paying them a lot of money. So I don't want to hear about the San Francisco Giants being broke um. when they won three World Series prior to COVID. COVID's over. Let's put that in our fucking rear view window and let's win some games. Let's make some money and let's spend it on the team, whether that's in player development on our, and or free agency. So please check out the Tim Kawakami interview with our boy Farhan Zaidi. We will stay up to date on anything happening with the Giants and with Major League Baseball. In the within the Farhan interview, he said he anticipates things picking up over the next couple of weeks. So look for the Giants probably to make one of these big signings of these Boris clients: Bellinger, Montgomery, Snell, Chapman.
probably one of them is going to sign with the San Francisco Giants. I guess if I had to pick out of the four, I would hope it would be Blake Snell. And look for the Giants to trade for a shortstop and probably trim the fat around this roster, whether it be some of the excess pitching, some of the middling pitching that you have, some of these outfield spots, perhaps even some infielders if you make a move for somebody like Matt Chapman. So we will be here to talk about it right here on the Giants Baseball Podcast, and I will see you guys later. Yep.